For a long time, when talking about the richest people in the world, people have mentioned famous figures such as Rockefeller, the King of Oil, Elon Musk, the CEO of Tesla and SpaceX, Bill Gates and information technology tycoon, Jeff Bezos, the emperor of the Amazon retail chain, Warren Buffett, a stock guru, Amancio Ortega, who dominates the fashion industry, or Larry Ellison, the father of many computer softwares, etc. They're all famous, rich, and powerful figures. Their financial power can have certain effects on the economic structure of an entire country or region. All of these people have assets exceeding $50 billion, but are they the richest people in human history? Today, Luxury Style will reveal to you a surprising truth that few people know. According to historians, King Mansa Musa of Mali is the richest man of all time. Many documents recorded that the amount of gold that King Musa spent on a trip to Egypt caused the country's gold market to plummet and it took 12 years to recover. In today's video, Luxury Style will share with you information about the secret of King Mansa Musa, the richest man in human history who spent 12 tons of gold in one day. Here, we invite you to the detailed content. Who is Mansa Musa and where does he come from? Time Magazine has released a list of the richest people of all time based on different calculations. King Musa Kieta I, also known as Mansa Musa, was considered the richest person in human history with the assets that were difficult to measure. History records that Mansa Musa was the richest person of all time with a net worth equivalent to $415 billion converted to current value a huge number nearly double that of LVMH boss Bernard Arnault at the top of the Forbes list in 2023 being a person with assets of over 200 billion USD. Although more than 700 years have passed in terms of wealth and influence, no one could compare with Mansa Musa. Up to now, Mansa Musa has still been considered one of the most powerful people in history and also the richest person in the world. If he converted his assets into kind, he could own all the land and assets in Africa at the time. Mansa Musa (1280–1337) came to power in 1312 and became the 10th king of Timbuktu, an ancient city in Mali in the Western Africa nowadays. At the time of Mansa Musa's accession, the Mali Empire controlled the former territories of the Ghana Empire in southern Mauritania and Mel (Mali nowadays) and its surrounding lands. Mansa Musa ascended the throne at a time when European countries were suffering from shortages of important resources due to civil wars, while Mali's economy thrived thanks to its huge reserves of gold and salt. According to historians, nature favored Mali with vast salt fields from which the spice was loaded on the backs of camels to bustling commercial centers in Chad, Niger, and Sudan, Congo, Central Africa, etc., and the buyer paid in gold. The same went for gold mines, just scraped the top layer of soil and sifted it. Gold would be found. By the early 19th century, mineralogists estimated that the amount of gold mined under Musa was no less than 3,000 tons. With the power of gold, the Mali Empire overshadowed much of Western Africa from the Atlantic coast to the commercial hub of Timbuktu and parts of the Sahara Desert. During his reign, Mansa Musa greatly expanded Mali's territory by conquering 24 cities and other areas. When he died in 1337, he had amassed wealth so vast that it's difficult to detail and more than anyone can describe. According to recorded documents, the amount of gold that King Musa spent on his trip to Egypt caused the country's gold market to plummet and it took more than a decade to recover. In the 14th century, the names of Mansa Musa and the Mali Empire spread throughout the Arab world and attracted great attention from cartographers in Europe. To the extent that the map was published in 1375, Mansa Musa appeared in the middle of West Africa sitting on a throne and holding a gold bar in his hand as a symbol of wealth. The question is, where did his wealth come from? According to the researcher Kathleen Bickford Burjak, as an emperor, Mansa Musa had almost limitless access to the most valuable resources of wealth in the medieval world. The wealth of the Mali Empire came from natural gold mines in West Africa. Besides that, they also had copper mines and an endless supply of cowrie shells used as currency in Africa for centuries. However, what brought him wealth was not the wealth gained from conquests or annexations, but the natural resources themselves found in Mali. According to documents describing the Mali Empire in Arabic written at that time, for every gold bar that people got in the land of Mali, they would have to give half to the king. This was considered a tax that had to be paid to the king and Musa was given a lot of gold. 
with limitless resources, this king possessed huge gold reserves. With his meaningless wealth, this man gave away gold and silver to all the poor and miserable people he met. However, that kindness caused the gold market in Egypt and the Middle East to plummet for 12 years. According to estimates by the British Museum, the Mali Empire during Musa's reign possessed nearly half of the gold reserves of the Old World, lands known to Europeans before Christopher Columbus discovered America in 1492, including Europe, Asia, Africa, and surrounding islands. During his time in power, Mansa Musa expanded quite a lot of territory. He annexed the city of Timbuktu and re-established power in Gao. Stretching 3,200 kilometers, the Mali Empire was as large as nine African countries today combined, including Senegal, Gambia, Guinea-Bissau, Côte d'Ivoire, Burkina Faso, Mali, Niger, Mauritania, and Chad. Mali was once a rich and prosperous empire, a commercial and cultural center whose influence spanned the Sahara and West Africa, spreading to the Middle East and even East Asia. Jinger Bear Mosque in Timbuktu was built in 1327 after Musa's pilgrimage to Mecca. This monument still exists nowadays. The historic pilgrimage changed people's understanding of luxury and wealth. In 1324, the whole world learned about Mansa Musa's huge wealth when he made a pilgrimage of more than 6,400 kilometers to Mecca. Mansa Musa's pilgrimage was considered the most luxurious and majestic trip of an emperor. It took place from 1324 to 1325. According to Smith, Mansa Musa led an entourage of tens of thousands of soldiers, civilians and slaves, 500 messengers dressed in silk, and a caravan of camels and horses loaded with gold bars. This wrote his name into history, a history not well known outside of Africa. Emperor Musa was said to bring with him 60,000 entourages, 12,000 slaves, and each follower carried 4 pounds, equivalent to 1.81 kg, of solid gold. 80 camels were responsible for carrying 50 to 300 pounds, equivalent to 22 to 136 kg of gold dust, to be given to poor people in the lands that pilgrimage passes through. He also built long trains just to carry livestock, goods, and of course a large amount of wealth with it a lot of gold. In the drawings made by Egyptian artists in the mid-14th century, many depicted this unique pilgrimage, while in the chronology recorded by historian Mustafa Kemal, during the reign of the Egyptian king Egyptian al-Malik al-Nazir, there was a passage. When the heroes pulling the carts carrying King Musa and his courtiers arrived at Cairo, the capital of Egypt, the last of the entourage arrived two days later. Ibn Khaldun, a historian, said, Every time he stopped, Musa entertained his entourage with rare foods and candies, extremely luxurious items at that time. Historians estimated that Musa's pilgrimage spent a total of 12.3 tons of gold, leading to devaluation across the Middle East, causing about $1.5 billion in damage to the economy there during this period. According to al umadis writings, King Musa spent all of his gold in Egypt, but when it ran out, he continued to borrow from Cairo merchants to spend at extremely high interest rates, which were sure by gold reserves still under the ground in his home country of Mali. There were also documents that, to correct his mistake of affecting the economy of this region, Mansa Musa brought back gold from loan shocks in Cairo. This was probably the first and only time in history up to that point that an individual could control the price of gold and silver throughout the vast Mediterranean region. When arriving in Mecca, King Musa donated 20 tons of gold to helping restore and upgrade the temples in the holy city. Musa then brought back several Muslim scholars, including descendants of the Prophet Muhammad and the poet and architect Abu Ashaq es Saheli. According to some sources of information, the king paid the poet 200 kg of gold, equivalent to 8.2 million USD at the present time, to get this scholar's services. The Founder of Urban Civilization After his pilgrimage to Mecca, King Mansa Musa began building many great mosques, huge libraries, royal palaces, and Islamic schools throughout his empire. Although he always focused on developing Islam and his ruling policy, Mansa Musa established a freedom of religion and belief. Some Muslim scholars who visited Mali were surprised to see the colorful clothing of the local people. Women here did not even need to wear veils. Education under Mansa Musa was completely free and received many encouraging policies. The wealthy king also set up the prestigious Sankor Matsura University. It was these things that attracted people from all over the world to come here to improve their knowledge. During this time, Mali's major cities had high standards of living. Sergio Domian, an Italian scholar of art and architecture, wrote about this period. It laid the foundations for an urban civilization. During its peak, Mali had at least 400 cities and the inland area of Niger Delta, which were very densely populated. 
History recorded that Mansa Musa passed through the cities of Timbuktu and Gao on his way to Mecca, and that he made them part of his empire when he returned in 1325. He brought the architect from Andalusia, a region in Spain, and Cairo to build the great places in Timbuktu and the Jingwer Bear Great Mosque which still exists today. Timbuktu soon became a center of commerce, culture, and Islam. Merchants from Hausaland, Egypt, and other kingdoms in Africa came to trade. Universities were established in the city as well as in other Malayan cities such as Jen and Segu, and the Islamic faith was spread through the bazaars and universities. News of the wealthy city of the Mali Empire even spread across the Mediterranean to southern Europe, where traders from Venice, Granada, and Genoa soon added Timbuktu to their trade maps to exchange goods for gold. During the reign of Mansa Musa, the University of Timbuktu had many jurists, astronomers, and mathematicians. The university became the center of learning and culture, attracting many Muslim scholars from across Africa and the Middle East to Timbuktu. In 1330, the Masi Kingdom invaded and captured the city of Timbuktu. Gao was recaptured by Musa's generals, and Musa also quickly regained Timbuktu. He built a rampart and stone fortress and placed a standing army so that he could protect the city from future invaders. While Musa's palace has disappeared for a long time, universities and mosques are still present in Timbuktu. By the end of Mansa Musa's reign, the University of Sankare had become a fully-fledged university with the largest book collection in Africa since the days of the Library of Alexandria. Sankare University has the capacity to house 25,000 students and owns one of the largest libraries in the world with more than a million manuscripts. The Empire Fades In 1337, King Musa died, and the successor was Mansa Magan, his son. At the end of the 14th century, attracted by huge natural resources, the Songhe Empire sent troops to occupy Mali. According to historians, King Musa only focused on Islam by developing temples, Islamic universities, and commercial centers. He paid little attention to the military field because he believed that gold would decide everything. When the invasion of the Songhe Empire broke out, in just a few weeks the Songhe army occupied half of Mali's territory, while the young king Mansa Magan could only sit back and watch his generals and soldiers flee to protect their lives with the amount of gold assets they had accumulated, even though before that many ramparts and fortresses had been built. At the end of the 15th century, Mali became a Portuguese colony. Decades later, this country's precious natural resources have been exploited to the point of exhaustion. During his reign, King Mansa Musa left behind many legacies showing a brilliant golden empire. All the evidences throughout his 25-year reign were enough to confirm that he was the richest person in human history. Up to now, on the rankings of the world's richest people through the ages, the image of King Mansa Musa has still been ranked at the top. It shows not only the wealth of an empire, but also the bravery and ability of a king. Maybe in the future, with the flow of time, we will have more discoveries about the richest tycoons still hidden somewhere. But the image of the king sitting on the throne and holding a bar of gold is still a monument that is difficult to collapse in our perception of wealth. In spite of not spending 12 tons of gold a day like King Mansa Musa in history, kings and lords emerged with the image of spending a lot of money. Let's take a look at those names. Following King Mansa Musa was Genghis Khan, 1162-1227, who was a Mongol Khan and the founder of the Mongol Empire after uniting independent tribes in Northeast Asia in 1206. He was one of the most prominent and influential military leaders in world history. Genghis Khan's conquest throughout Eurasia to expand territory brought to unity and develop trade exchanges. At the peak of this empire stretching from China to Europe, he controlled the largest contiguous empire in history. This is why he was ranked among the richest people in human history. However, he was generous. Scholars say Genghis never hoarded his wealth. On the contrary, his generosity was seen as the key to his influence. His total assets included a lot of land stretching from China to most of Europe. Emperor Shen Tong, 1048-1085 The sixth emperor of the Song Dynasty, China ruled an empire with powerful economic capacity, with assets worth 25-30% to 30 of global GDP at the time, according to Money.com. Historians said that this kingdom was light years ahead of European governments in implementing a very effective tax collection policy. Song Tan Tong's technological improvements as well as centralized management measures also contributed to enriching the country. Another person mentioned is Akbar I, 1542-1605, the famous emperor of the Mughal dynasty in India. This king was said to own assets valued at about 25% of GDP of global economic output. 
According to Fortune reporter Chris Matthews, India's GDP per capita under King Akbar's reign was on par with that of England's Elizabethan period. And another equally impressive name is Roman Emperor Augustus Caesar. During his rule, he was extremely wealthy and possessed huge assets. According to the professor Ian Morris, Augustus at that time held an amount of personal wealth equivalent to one-fifth of the Roman economy. And there are many other names whose wealth is an advantage for not only themselves, but also a country. It is the proof for the existence of the most powerful empires in world history. What do you think about the richness of the people considered the richest in human history, especially King Mansa Musa that we share today? Please leave your comments below this video. See you again in the latest videos of Luxury Style.